All right, so welcome to the first video that pertains to radiation biophysics. And now we're going to slightly get into the thick of things from the 11th lecture. Uh, this lecture is from Professor uh, Peter. And we are going to uh, not really get into the lecture slides just yet, but we're going to go through the dose concepts, the physical dose concepts, and the biological dose concepts. So let's, let's get started and see how we can relate radiation with, with uh, absorption. Now let's get started with uh, a concept called absorbed dose. This is the most basic concept. It says that there's some energy, energy absorbed in material. There's some energy absorbed in a unit of mass. And this, uh, this unit is gray, which we're talking about uh, uh, joules or per kilogram. This, this unit is gray, and we'll see it often. And uh, I do believe that it is important to remember these units. But uh, our problem with this concept, this absorbed dose, is it doesn't really uh, effectively describe the implications doses would have on human tissues. And why is that? Well, it was calculated, and this is from the presentation as well, that 8 gray uh, of absorbed dose, 8 gray of absorbed dose, and we know that 8 gray is fatal for human beings, 8 gray of absorbed dose, and it was calculated that it causes uh, a change, a shift in temperature of 2 to times 10 to the negative 3 Kelvin, which is also, um, also equivalent to uh, 2 times 10 to the negative 3 uh, Celsius. This is a really small uh, change in temperature. So we can really, we can really conclude from this that it, it isn't heat. It isn't heating the tissue that is creating the damage from this 8 gray of fatal uh, radiation dose. So it is, it is indeed necessary to gain another perspective as to what is going on in the tissues that is creating so much damage without a much increase in temperature. And for that we have the, uh, the uh, concept, the next physical concept, which is, which is exposure. And this is actually one of the best descriptions or the best definitions I found for exposure from uh, uh, Professor Pater's presentation. And basically this is the amount of positive or negative charges generated by an X-ray or gamma radiation in a body of unit mass during electron equilibrium. And I, and I know this is, this is very vague right now, so we're going to make a point to understand this. And I promise this is not as, as bad as it sounds. So what we're going to do is we have this ionizing radiation here, and it's hitting our body unit mass. And obviously we're only, in this, in physical concepts, we're only really looking at a specific unit of mass, even though it's also surrounded in material. It's also surrounded, if this is, this is my arm, this could be the uh, unit mass I am looking into. And these red dots are electrons in this uh, body unit mass. And there's also obviously electrons all around, not only in this specific unit mass, but all around the tissues. And I'm drawing electrons for a very obvious reason that you'll understand in a in a second. So what's going on here? We already learned that ionizing radiation is going to cause ionization and electrons are going to start bouncing around. What can I expect to happen? Let's just say this electron, this electron here, it got some kinetic energy and it's tossed out and it goes out. Let's just say this electron got some kinetic energy, tossed out, and interacted with this electron, caused secondary ionization, and this electron got back into the material. So it's back in the material here. Let's just say this guy here bounced out, and this guy here bounced out, and this guy here bounced back and forth, and it still stayed inside the tissue. And we have another, another electron here maybe bounce out, got this guy, this guy bounced off of this guy, this guy bounced off back, and it bounces this guy off that goes shooting out. And there's, there's uh, complex interactions in which what you really need to know is we can have electrons going out of the material and electrons going in. So we can't really measure anything until all the electrons settle. Or in a sense, we need for all the electrons to stop moving for us to measure what was the change. Because I can't measure the change when it's still, when it's still occurring. So electron equilibrium really means when electrons stop moving, when 
the sum of electrons going out and the sum of electrons going in, they stop moving, and that's when I really need to take my measurement. And my measurement is the change in charge over my unit mass, my unit mass. So basically, if I lost some electrons in this, in this uh, unit of mass, or maybe I gained some electrons, so we're really looking at the charges. We're really looking at the charges that were generated. Maybe I lost some electrons, so I'm, in, uh, I'm, in, I'm more positive. My tissue is more positive because it lost a bunch of electrons in my ionization process. Maybe I even gained some electrons, so my tissue is now more negative. So this is this dose concept, uh, the exposure, the physical dose concept. We're going to keep on going to a slightly more interesting and a slightly less intuitive dose concept, which is called KERMA the kinetic energy released in material and its unit is also gray and this is the definition and it's taken from the minimal uh, requirement question article from the department of biophysics and cell biology in Debreza. so let's see the sum of the initial kinetic energy all particles generated by the ionizing radiation in an absorbing material divided by the mass of the absorbing material. And I promise this is easier than it's made to sound, but basically what we say here is, let's take a look at, at the exposure. What we're saying is, yeah, these guys got some energy and they started moving around. So they got some kinetic energy and they started moving around, but I also know that I have some energy that is released from the material as heat. I have some heat going out. So if I measure the charge, I can't I'm not really measuring the heat, which is additional energy that is not accounted for. What I really want to do in KERMA is I want to measure what, what energy is imparted, what energy is imparted to this unit mass before these electrons start bouncing around. And that way, I'm going to have also the, the potential heat that would be released and the potential kinetic energy or rather the potential change in charge. So I'm only going to be able to measure this if I take my measurement before these electrons now bouncing around and some heat is, is released. So effectively, my measurement is going to take place the very second that the ionizing radiation hits this material, this material, but before it, um, it transfers all of its energy. And that's why it's kind of a weird thing. It's kind of a, more of a concept when I did some research to look as to which, uh, which, which research centers use KERMA. I, I, more, I was more led to believe that KERMA is some sort of a concept that helps us describe this physical, physical idea. So it is essentially the sum of all the energies that are going to be released in the material by this, by this ionizing radiation. And think about it, before all these guys got energies and they were tossed around. Before that happened, that's when I'm actually doing my measurements and the units are the same. The units are great. And I know that this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but what you really need to understand is the definition. That basically, KERMA is all of my energy that is generated by this radiation in this material before all these guys started bouncing around. And it's a good idea to make a point to understand the definition, but don't expect to see this in everyday lives. It's not, it's not really, really used as far as I've noticed. What is more used is the biological, the biological dose concepts, which we're going to start talking about. And the biological dose concepts, equivalent dose and effective dose, are both measured in this unit, sievert. And I'm going to touch on this unit a little later because it could be kind of tricky. So we're going to leave it for later. But first of all, if you're looking at this really, really equa uh, bizarre equation that may seem complicated, it really isn't. What equivalent dose says is that, hey guys, I know that we're measuring uh, uh, mass and there's ionizing radiation that's hitting it, but uh, alpha particles and beta particles and gamma particles, they're not really all the same. Not all ionizing radiation is the same. Some would hit you in a different way. Some have different let. Some have different penetration. So really, we need to consider what type of radiation we're using. What type of radiation we're using. And this is called the radiation weighing factor. Radiation weighing factor. Weighing factor. Radiation quality factor is really the same. And this is it. It's denoted as weighing factor of radiation. 
So let's see what we have going on in this mess. It's actually pretty straightforward. The equivalent dose denoted by uh, H of T is calculated by sigma, which is the sum, sum of R, sum of all radiation with the weighing factor of the specific radiation time the absorbed dose that we already discussed, the absorbed dose of the given radiation in the tissue that I'm looking into. So again, what I'm saying is I'm taking the sum of all the radiations and their respective weight factor times the absorbed dose of my radiation in my tissue. And this is going to give me a little bit more information as far as addressing what type of radiation is affecting me. <coughs> Because if alpha particles have way more lead, then they're going to have a different effect than beta particles. So we can't really address them as the same idea. We can't really do that. And just to give you an idea of what is a weighing factor, I snapped this, and you don't really need to remember anything by any means out of, these, out of this table. But my source is the European Nuclear Society, which is where I've done most of my research to understanding what is going on. And this is their website. It's pretty cool. But what you can see right out the bat, uh, we know what, what electrons are. Electrons are beta negatives. And we know uh, photons, uh, we can have gamma or X-ray photons. And look at what alpha particles. They have a very, very high, a very, very high weighing factor. So essentially if I'm using, if I have alpha radiation or beta radiation, I really can't, can't resolve them as the same. And that is why I need this biological dose constant. Perfect. We're just going to keep on trucking and get to the final a biological dose concept that makes the most sense. <coughs> Effective dose, our second biological dose concept, still in Sieverts, and I promise I'm going to get to that. And what basically, what basically the effective dose concept says is, okay, guys, I know that not all radiations are the same, and we have a weighing factor for the radiation, but think of it this way, not all tissues are the same. So I'm going to write different tissues, different tissues, tissues, Exhibit, exhibit different radiation sensitivity. And that somewhat makes sense to us. We can't expect all the tissues in our body to behave the same way. And we're going to learn about what types of cells um, are more uh, radiation sensitive. But as you can imagine, just like if you're going through a radiation therapy and you've seen uh, or you've seen in the movies some uh, cancer patients going through radiation uh, therapy, you see all their hair is falling off. That is because the, uh, the skin is very, very sensitive to radiation. So obviously, we need to have some sort of weighing factor for our tissues because not all tissues behave the same way. And now what we're doing is we're just taking a weighing factor for tissues and we're putting it into the same equation. So what would it look like? The effective dose denoted by E is the sum of all radiation applicable on the given tissue, the sum of all radiation of the tissue, including the weighing factor of the tissue and the weighing factor of the radiation in question, times the absorbed dose of the radiation in the tissue. So basically I'm saying take all the radiation that was absorbed in the tissue, what type of tissue is it, what type of radiation is it, and how much absorbed dose am I looking at? And this kind of makes sense because now we're incorporating uh, the type of radiation, alpha radiation, on, let's say, uh, muscle tissue. And now we're being very, very specific. And we can get specific information. And this biological dose concept somewhat hopefully makes sense. And it just so happens that the same uh, European Nuclear Society obviously would have information about uh, how different tissues react. And you can see that our, our reproductive... Uh, reproductive glands, the gonads are very, very sensitive, and the colon is somewhat sensitive. It is almost as sensitive as bone marrow, and uh, there's, there's some sort of sensitivity here as well, and we can expect uh, more sensitivities from different organs. And this is pretty interesting to look at, but it's not very important to memorize at all. Now I'm going to touch a little bit about sieverts, and sieverts are not Sieverts are not super intuitive to understand, but when you hear about stuff that went on in Japan, you will hear sieverts, this, sieverts, that. And why is that? Gray measures, gray measures the, uh, the change in, um, in energy over the change 
in uh, in mass, but sieverts refers to damage that is that is done. Sievert, and the definition is one sievert, is the damage one gray of 250 kilo electron volt X-ray would cause in a human tissue. And why do I need all this mess? Because basically one gray is a physical concept that refers to uh, the change in energy versus uh, over the mass of the material, but it doesn't really pertain to what damage does it do. And Sievert is really asking me how much damage is done. So if I have, if I say I'm experiencing, there is a two uh, Sievert damage around the radius area that you can expect from a nuclear blast, blah, 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 and this is totally arbitrary. That means that you may expect the same damage on human tissues as two, two grays of 250 kilo electron volt x-ray and don't really don't worry you don't really need to use these units you're not expected uh, you're not expected to go out and use these units and if these units are really important to you maybe one day you'll be a radiologist but up until then just understand the definition itself sievert measures damage damage to damage to human tissues and our uh, in our minimal requirement questions article um, contains the definition that I just gave. So we're done with the uh, physical and uh, biological dose concepts, and we can move on to uh, more essential things. See you in the next video.